Hello everyone, this is Silverdisk, and today I am finally bringing you fun things that you might have missed in the Shiver Peaks. Some time ago I did a video called Fun Things That You Might Have Missed in Ascalon, and even longer before that I did Fun Things That You Might Have Missed in Kryta. And those videos were actually pretty popular. I finally got a new microphone, so I decided, hey, let's go do fun things that you might have missed in the Shiver Peaks. In this video, I am going to take a look at the hidden areas, mini dungeons, achievements, things that you might have missed while going through these areas. I am not going to take a look at stuff that you need for your world completion, but at stuff that, you know, most players don't actually know about. And even if you have played Guild Wars 2 for thousands of hours, I am hoping that today I'll show you something that you don't know yet. Alright, so uh, let's get started. In the southeast of Frostgorge Sound, there is a really interesting wall cave between the Safe Watch Vale and Offering Stone points of interest. When you enter this cave, you will obviously see that there's a bunch of crawl here, but after a while, you will also notice some tattered journals. These tattered journals tell the story of an explorer called Francis Magellan, and Francis Magellan went to explore this cave and he found out that the crawl were being agitated by something. Uh, there's a bunch of traps here when you press on, you just gotta wait for the rocks to drop. After they've dropped you can drum in jump into the red circle without any danger. It's not that hard really, you just gotta get the hang of it. And uh, then you'll notice the second volume which continues the story. Uh, Francis found out that the crawl were actually locking up something inside of this cave using a gate. And you obviously smash the gate because that's what, what players do. And uh, then you'll see that the thing uh, the crawl were locking up is actually oozes. And, uh, this is pretty tricky. After a while you'll notice the third journal and uh, this continues his story and it's, it's really dramatic. Basically he found out that there's also an enormous ooze here and he's trapped and he can't go anywhere and that's his last journal. And when you press on to the end of the cave you will see that there's a champion giant blue ooze here which is the huge ooze that Francis was talking about. And uh, yeah, you might want to do this with a party. Uh, I was lucky there was someone else was also killing this, so we got it pretty easily. And uh, you kill it, and there's also an amazing grand chest here. When you open the grand chest, you will get the Magellan's Memento Explorer achievement, which is worth 10 achievement points. In Lonas Pass, there's a place known as Gutra's Homestead. It's located right next to the False Lake, and it's basically just this you know, this Norn Lodge, and most people come here and they uh, they walk up to this door and it's a bit strange, it just says the homestead is locked up tight, it looks like there's no way to get in. And that's pretty much it, you know, when I came here I was like, oh this probably has to do something with an event, but that's actually not the case, this place actually never opens. However, if you have a character that is a member of the Order of Whispers, let me just switch to a character that is a member of the Order of Whispers. Um, you'll actually notice that you'll get some more options when interacting with this door. Uh, you'll see examine the door and it will say a small Order of Whispers emblem sits slightly elevated from the door's surface. It looks like some sort of button. If you press it you actually get teleported inside of the lodge. And there's nothing really in here except for this strange looking machine. If you interact with this thing called Unknown over here, uh, it says pull if you move close to it, you'll see that this uh, this area actually elevates and you can enter this Secret Order of Whispers Lair, which is located down here. It's a lot like um, the Secret Order of Whispers Lair I showed in the Ascalon video, but um, this one is actually like really well hidden. Most people don't actually know that this one exists. Um, you can talk to this NPC here, uh, she says a bit about, you know, what this place is. You can repair your armor, there's a merchant, uh, there's some other NPCs you can talk to, and there's also an armor smith and a weapon smith. And, uh, you know, this is really not, uh, there's even some, <laughs> there's even some agents disguised as prior members, which is a really nice touch, I think. Anyway, um... You know, this place isn't, it's its not huge, it's not really adding anything to the gameplay, but I just think it's so cool. You know, it really adds to the to the feeling of the Order of Whispers being a secret organization and, you know, just discovering this place, it's, it's just, it's absolutely awesome. If you have a character that's a member of the Order of Whispers, I highly recommend you check this place out. 
In the south of Mount Maelstrom there's a place known as Moxa Pyronetics. This is an inquest base with in the center a pretty large cannon. If you kill the inquest's veteran enemies here they have a small chance of dropping a beta inquest control key. And if you kill the regular enemies here they have a small chance of dropping an alpha inquest control key. If you don't want to waste your time getting these keys, you can also get them on the trading post. If you interact with the console that is located right next to the cannon, you will see that you can actually insert both keys. If you do this, the cannon will get activated and will shoot to the north into the treacherous depths. Uh, unfortunately for the inquest here, there are also a bunch of Largos in the treacherous depths who do not like being fired at. So. Uh, You'll see what happens. A bunch of inquest guys appears and then a rather badass looking Largos appears and he assassinates the inquests. And then the Largos leaves again like an absolute badass. That's so cool. In Lona's Pass, south of the False Lake Waypoint, there is an extremely well hidden underwater cave that leads to one of the most frustrating jumping puzzles in the game. This jumping puzzle is called Griffin Rook Run and I think that most people already know about this. However, what most people don't know is that you can also take an alternate route. If you jump on top of this uh, little house over here, you can actually jump onto the wall. Just take a couple of jumps and drop down onto the platform. Once you're on the platform you will notice that there's a path here with some air elementals. If you follow this path to the north, you will see a giant called Tom Tom, and Tom Tom basically tells you that uh, he has a pet griffin called Beaker, and that he is very fond of Beaker, and Beaker is apparently hungry. And uh, right next to you, you will see some meat, and if you take this meat and walk over to Beaker, wow, just look at that meat, it's amazing. <laughs> just give it to Beaker and you will get the Beaker's Empty Belly Explorer achievement, which is worth 10 achievement points. In Snowden Drifts, there's a place called Snowdrift Haven. And, you know, this place looks rather generic. There's a lot of places like this in Syria. But the fun thing about this place is that if you walk over here, you'll notice this back door. And if you actually walk down here, you'll notice this rather strange looking door. And if you open this door, You'll see that there's a small secret Order of Whispers base here. Uh, you can talk to this person over here. And the fun thing about this place is that there's actually another secret door here. If you use you the secret moment. door, you'll actually end up down uh, down the hill that Snowdrift Haven is you know, built on. If you look up, you'll see that Snowdrift Haven is actually over there. And the fun thing about this place is that uh, every once in a while this event spawns. And I'm not sure what happened here because there's... It looks like there's a duplicate NPC over here, but um, reputation precedes you. if you talk Come to along. this guy, actually this event will trigger. And there's actually a rather long event chain, like I think it's this event and then you gotta destroy a totem and then you gotta kill a boss, which is actually a group event. So, <laughs> Foes in Dredge Hunt Cliffs have a small chance of dropping a Dwarven key. You can use these keys to open one of two small dwarven tombs that are located in Dredgehunt Cliffs. The first one is located north of the Grey Road waypoint. You simply walk up to the door and interact with it and an event will trigger. Uh, in this case some ice imps will spawn. When you kill them you can just open the chest and <laughs> you will get some amazing loot including imperial fragments. And north of the tribulation waypoint there's another one of these tombs that you can open. In the northeast of Dredgehound Cliffs, there's also another dwarven door. However, you cannot open this door with your key. In fact, you cannot even interact with it. This door only opens during a special event. In the north of Dredgehound Cliffs, next to the Travelance Waypoint, there's a char called Garavid. And usually he does nothing, That's but every it. once in a while you can interact with him to trigger an escort event. In this escort event, you will escort him towards the Dwarven door we just saw. Once you're there, he will cast a spell to open this door. When you enter the door, you are teleported into the Forsaken Hall's mini dungeon. In the first room of this mini dungeon, you need to escort Gervit towards the door at the end of the room. You can do this by using your torch to scare the enemies away. When Gervert has reached the end of the room, you will need to find some door pieces for him to open the door. You can find these by interacting with rubble that is spread all around the first room. 
As you can see, I just found a door piece over there. You just bring these together and you will open the door. The next room is a jumping puzzle. Garfield will simply walk to the door at the end. To open the door, you will have to activate a couple of levers that are spread around the jumping puzzle. Some are rather straightforward and others are pretty tricky as you can see here. Once all levers have been activated, the door will open and you will see that it actually leads back to the first room. However, now the final boss will have spawned. Once you kill it, it will drop the Dwarven treasure and you will get the Forsaken Fortune Explorer achievement, which is worth 10 achievement points. Apparently, the boss had eaten the treasure. This is one of my favorite event changes in Gold for Stew, so if you haven't seen it yourself yet, I highly recommend you check this one out. In the southeastern corner of Snowden Drifts, right next to the Owl Waypoint, there's a hot vendor known as Lari, and Lari sells ghost owl feathers. They're only 147 karma and they're basically tonics. You know, usually I don't care much for tonics. I have one cool permanent tonic and you know the other tonics I get I just throw them away. But this tonic is just it's really worth a mention because it's so cool. You turn into this owl and uh, if you move around, you actually fly around. And I mean just look at his face. It's it's just amazing. And if you have the walking key bound you can also walk around as the owl and, you know, like, take off and stuff. This has got to be one of my favorite tonics in the game. It's so cool. And, you know, it's really cheap too, so you can really stock up on it if you want to. In the east of Lornos Pass, there's a grand statue that most people probably already know about because there's a skill point here and a point of interest. However, what most people don't know is that if you type slash new well in front of the statue, you will see that pretty fancy effect and you will get the Grand's Blessing buff. It's not really a great buff, but it's pretty neat nevertheless. There's a really nice looking waterfall in the southwest of Timberline Falls, but what most people don't know is that there's an even nicer area right next to it. If you go a bit to the right, you'll notice that there's a cave over here. If you enter this cave, you'll see one of the most beautiful areas in, in interior. Like, this place just looks amazing. While there's there's no chest here, there's no explorer achievement or anything, this this place just looks absolutely amazing. I I think I might actually go record a harp video sometime, it looks so nice, just wow. All right, that's it. Thanks a lot for watching the video. I hope I showed you something you didn't know yet. Um, if you enjoyed this video, you might want to check out fun things you might have missed in Ascalon or fun things you might have missed in Krita. And now that I finally have a new microphone, the next part in this video series should be coming up pretty soon, so stay tuned for that if you're interested. Also, if you enjoy music played on Guild Wars 2 instruments, you might want to check out the Ocarina of Time medley do what I did a while back with Nestrate. We are also working on a new medley, so stay tuned for that. Thanks a lot for watching the video, uh, I will see you guys next time.